Hi. In this short video, I would like to talk just a little bit about the link between institutional strategy and learning technologies. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say just a few words on strategy itself. So to just put this in context, uh, strategy really is, is about surviving in difficult circumstances or flourishing, hopefully flourishing. It tends to be a somewhat longer term horizon. Um, it is more about big ideas. It's not just always about continuous improvement, we'll say. So it sometimes needs big decisions, not just about what to do, although what to do is extremely important, but often the more difficult decisions are about what not to do. Um, and it is about the right ideas. And here, this links to the image of Peter Drucker here, who is more or less telling us that if you do something well, but it's not the thing you should be doing, that really is not going to have an impact. We have to pick the right ideas. So we need to think about it and be selective and do those things that we think will have the biggest impact. Uh, it will, of course, require resources and effort, and that's why we may have to not to do some other things. And of course, that means it needs a push from the top. Now, this is not a bad place to start with strategy, I think. Um, there are some projects going on that maybe look good, but are they what the students really want? And one of them that I would that I would probably identify that I believe maybe is not as much value is this giving out badges to students, give them nice gold stars that they can put on their head. Is that what they really want? Because if, if we ask students what they really want, and this can come from conversations with students, uh, or it can come from surveys that are available online, these are the sort of answers they give. For starters, and I put this very simple one, they want recordings of their classes. A lot of them got these recordings dur during the COVID pandemic, and then they were taken from them. They want them back, a fairly simple thing. They want flexible access. They've suddenly realized as well during COVID that they can be, that recordings make it more flexible. There are other things we can do to make it more flexible, but students want to be able to not worry if they miss a week of class because of some illness or maybe a family event or other responsibilities they have. They need, they need that flexible access. They want grading transparency. They want to clear what's expected of them and how they got grades for various, for various assignments that they may have had. And of course, they want feedback. It's not just about them wanting feedback, by the way. We want them to get feedback, but we know that this is a huge challenge for lecturers, that it just increases their workload enormously to give good and timely feedback. Uh, they want skills for employment in their programs, and they want to lower the total cost, not just the cost of their fees, but all the other costs involved as well. They want to try and lower these as much as possible, and they haven't enough time. They want efficient use of their time. They don't want any of their time wasted. Now, I've added another one at the bottom here, which is accommodation. That's a problem. Uh, not, I put it in italics because it's not directly related to learning technology. Although I believe if you look at it in a bit more depth, you'll find that learning technology can actually contribute there. So I'd like now to give you some possible examples of strategic objectives that might be strongly linked to the use of learning technologies. No doubt there are other ones beyond that as well, but these are some examples of it. An obvious one is to improve the quality of the campus learning experience. Well, a very worthy objective. What about alternate offerings to 18 year olds if the standard campus offering doesn't suit them? Um, what about increasing the enrollment on campus, making it more attractive? Or, or maybe you have quite an attractive campus and you need to increase the capacity of campus. Uh, increasing access to campus programs. There may be students there that wish to do your campus programs, but for one reason or another, find it difficult to access. Um, some people say, and I happen to agree, that there will be far more learning beyond graduation than, than before graduation, and this will constitute lifelong learning. 
maybe we should be increasing our focus on that lifelong learning. There are opportunities there. New markets, I mean, apart from people that we wouldn't have traditionally felt we were trying to access, is also geography, whether it be distance around the country or even international. Uh, new products, and I put that in a way a business might put it, uh, in other words, is the degree the only game in town? Are the other other offerings you could gi you could give them? And this is relates to alternative credentials. Um, now, I have one last one here, which is domain specialization, which is rather be an, rather than be an institution that sort of appeals to everybody that has something for everybody. Maybe we should restrict our appeal and do it extremely well, and maybe even do it internationally. Um, so that's a strategy that can be helped uh, with learning technologies. Now, before I finish, I'd like to talk about this idea of digital transformation, um, uh, we, which is different from digitalization. We see, if we look at what we do traditionally, classes, practicals, assignments, and exams, we can use information technology to do those better or more efficiently. Zoom classes, recordings, uh, simulations for practicals, uh, electronic submission of assignments. Uh, maybe it helps us give us faster feedback or something like that. Um, uh, online quizzes and exams, maybe to make it easier to grade or, or easier for students to access. Um, overall, making what we do already that bit better. Okay, but digital transformation, we need to consider that. That is something quite different. That is saying, okay, we can do things completely different, new models, new ways of doing things. And we can do that because we now have the technology that allows us to do that. So that's the distinction between digital transformation and digitization. So I'd like to thank you for watching this uh, three videos on why strategy and just to remind you what's coming up for the next sections of the course, a more substantial section on the important technologies that can underpin a strategy and possibly even more importantly, looking at emerging models of education around the world and emerging strategies that are enabled by these technologies. And then finally, a small section on the barriers to change in your institution. Thank you very much.